Hey there, and welcome to another edition of Sky High History. We're getting academic today as we take a closer look at the history of Franklin and Marshall College located in Lancaster City, Pennsylvania. It's a college that dates back to just after the Revolutionary War and is still running strong as one of Lancaster County's 19 centers of higher education and trade. No reason to beat around the bush. Let's jump right into it. Franklin and Marshall College's origins date back to 1787 with the founding of Franklin College. This was made possible after Benjamin Franklin donated a generous sum of money toward the establishment of the college. The college was launched in a joint effort by leaders from the Lutheran and Reformed churches. This was considered a milestone in terms of collaboration between the English-speaking and German-speaking communities inhabiting Lancaster at the time. The first trustees of Franklin College featured four signers of the Declaration of Independence, three future governors of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, two members of the Constitutional Convention, seven officers from the Revolutionary Army, and a partridge in a pear tree. I'm kidding about both the partridge and the pear tree, I just wanted to see if you were paying attention. The common goal of the first board of trustees was simple, to preserve our present republic system of government through improvements in the arts and sciences which alone render nations respectable, great, and happy. The first day of classes for Franklin College took place on July 16, 1787 with instruction offered in both English and German. This made Franklin College the first bilingual college in the country. That isn't the only milestone for Franklin College though, as it was also the first co-educational institution in the country with its first class comprised of 78 men and 36 women. In that class was Rachia Graz, the first Jewish female college student in the United States. Unfortunately, the co-ed policy was abolished soon after classes started at the college and would not be revived for nearly 182 years. Now let's jump over to Mercerburg, Pennsylvania and fast forward to the year 1836. It was here and then that Marshall College was founded and named for the Supreme Court Chief Justice John Marshall. This opening was sponsored by the German Reformed Church and it attracted a highly professional and respected faculty and bore out leaders of an intellectual movement known as the Mercersburg Theology. Why is this important? Well, because in 1853, Marshall College would uproot and move to Lancaster, merging with Franklin College to form the Franklin and Marshall College we know it to be today. James Buchanan Jr., the 15th president of the United States, was the first president of Franklin and Marshall College's board of trustees. Over the years, especially after World War II, the college expanded its academic offerings and also became primarily residential as a center for higher learning. Franklin and Marshall College became well known for the classic core academics, philosophy, and had a particularly well-respected and strong science program. In 1969, Franklin and Marshall College once again opened its doors to female students, reinstating a co-educational policy to protect and promote the interests of female minds seeking knowledge. The connection to the Reformed Church, later part of the United Church of Christ, was severed in the late 20th century, and Franklin and Marshall College became a secular institution committed to liberal learning. Today, Franklin and Marshall College boasts more than 2,300 students and has been able to strike a harmonious balance between modern offerings and historic preservation. If you'd like to learn more about Franklin and Marshall College, please visit fandm.edu to dig up more about its history and academic offerings of which you can take advantage. If you liked this video, please leave a like down below by clicking that thumbs up button. If you really like this video though and want to stay up to date with my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll continue to make episodes of Sky High History for you history buffs out there, but if you like drone footage, drones, or anything related to aerial imaging, I promise there's plenty more to explore on my channel. Give me a try and see what you think. It costs you nothing but your time and helps me out tremendously. So until next time, take care. Bye now.